the thing. I've often heard parents say, I wish someone had told me earlier. I wish we had met you sooner. I was told my child would outgrow their sleep issues. And that's why I made this video. We're going to be talking about five signs that will help you know that your child needs to see a sleep specialist. Hi there, I'm Dr. Funke Apolapi Brown. I'm a sleep physician. I'm the founder of Restful Sleep MD and the Restful Sleep Place. I'm also the author of my new book, Beyond Tired, a sleep physician's guide to solving your child's sleep problems for good. Okay, so here's the thing. Not every child needs to be seen by a sleep physician. I mean, there's just not enough of us out there. But here are some red flags where I would say, you probably wanna lean in speak with your child's doctor and ask that more should be done in terms of figuring out what's going on with your child's sleep. I think I've seen so many people, so many families, so many kids struggle for so many years that this is something that we really have to address. In fact, there is research to show that there are certain diagnoses of sleep disorders like narcolepsy, where it takes about 10 years before the diagnosis is made. 10 years, a decade. Can you imagine that? So children with this condition have been struggling for 10 years before they eventually get the help that they need. And this is just unacceptable. So I want us to just talk through a few of these things and I've categorized them into five things. The first is really their sleep patterns and duration. Okay, this may seem very intuitive, but I want us to go through it. So if you have a child that has difficulties falling asleep, they have difficulties staying asleep, or they're waking up multiple times, or they're waking up super early. Now, this is not just a couple of times a week, <laughs> in which case everybody will fall into that category. This is something that has become chronic, meaning it's lasting over three months and your child is in this pattern and it's affecting their day. It's affecting your day. You're feeling at a loss. You're feeling overwhelmed. So the sleep patterns and durations that have been off. So either difficulties falling asleep, difficulties staying asleep, waking up excessively early in the morning, or they're just overall short in their sleep. So you, you have a child who maybe should be getting 10 hours of sleep and they're only getting seven or eight. In those situations, especially if this issue has been pervasive, it's been going on for a while and you can't necessarily blame it on teething or blame it on, you know, a recent change or blame it on an illness. You should reach out and say, OK, I need help to figure this thing out. Number two is their daytime symptoms. So if your child has any of the above symptoms and you feel like it's related to their sleep, please ask for help. The first is excessive daytime sleepiness. When children are up to about age five or so, they are allowed to nap. They need that nap. After that, kids should not nap. They shouldn't need a nap. So if you have a child who's so sleepy where they're napping in the car, they're napping as soon as they get home from school, they're falling asleep in school, they're excessively sleepy, you probably want to get that checked out, especially if you've looked and it seems like they're getting enough sleep overnight. So excessive daytime sleepiness is such a common reason and a common symptom of an underlying sleep disorder. Another one is behavioral issues. So what's going on? Are they excessively irritable? Are they moody? Do they have anxiety, depression, mood issues that you can almost directly relate to their sleep or even indirectly relate to their sleep? That's a sign that their sleep issues are pervasive and it's impacting them. And then another one is if they're having concentration problems. If you have a child who is super impulsive, who has a hard time focusing in class, who is failing in their grades, struggling to keep up with schoolwork, that might be a child that needs help in really deciphering is this related to sleep or is this related to something else and it's important you lean forward don't just assume they're going to outgrow it so that's the second so we talked about sleep patterns and duration and then we talked about daytime sleep daytime symptoms the third is if they have sleep related symptoms right now the reason why i had to go through the first the sleep patterns and duration as well as daytime symptoms is that many times parents are waiting for the sleep related symptoms some child sometimes your child may not have necessarily sleep related symptoms but if they do you 
absolutely, absolutely need to seek help. So what are some examples? If you have a child that is snoring, and I'm not just saying snoring occasionally, like with allergies or colds, they have what we call habitual snoring. They're snoring more than three nights a week and they're snoring all the time, right? They may not have super loud snoring. It may be soft snoring, but you definitely want to watch that. And then if they have pauses in their breathing, your child should not have prolonged pauses in breathing during sleep. So if they have pauses in their breathing, if you're noticing things like gasping or you're noticing restless sleep, they're just kind of moving around a lot during sleep, something is up. Their sleep quality is off, their sleep is fragmented, and we absolutely need to rule out any underlying sleep disorder. And there's so many sleep disorders that we don't want to play around. It could be sleep apnea, it could be restless leg syndrome, it could be restless sleep disorder, it could be so many other things that we do need them evaluated. So if your child is presenting with those symptoms, you do need to talk, speak with your doctor or make sure that you're seen by a sleep specialist. And then number four, I would say, are more of the physical symptoms. So what does that look like? If your child is having growth problems, sometimes it's because they have a high metabolic rate. They're burning calories because they have a sleep issue. So if they have a hard time with gaining weight or if they have a hard time with losing weight, actually, it might be related to poor sleep. If you have a child who, for instance, has frequent nightmares, um, frequent sleep terrors, sleepwalking, aggressive behaviors at night, frequent movements, they're moving around a lot during sleep, they're kicking and tossing and turning, That those are signs that your child should be evaluated. So those physical symptoms should be like a red flag to say, okay, I need this checked out. Again, don't just assume they will outgrow it. They might outgrow it, but you don't want to wait six months, a year and say, oh, oops, they didn't outgrow it and then start seeking that help. You do want to start to get on top of this very quickly, especially because we know that sleep issues are tightly related to our kids' development. And then number five, you know, honestly, I almost feel like this is even more important than any of the above. And that is parental concern, parental instinct. I always say this, trust your gut. As a parent, you know this child. You may not be a sleep expert. You may not be a pediatrician, but you are the expert of your child. So if you feel like, I think something's up. I think I should. I, I don't feel comfortable with how this child is sleeping. I don't feel comfortable with how this child's behavior is when it comes to sleep, or I feel like this sleep thing is off, then you're most likely right. And that in and of itself is enough for you to say, I just need this checked out. I may be wrong. I may be crazy, but I do need this. And it's not about being obnoxious. It's about you really seeking to have a team that will collaborate with you to make sure your child gets the evaluation they need so that they can get the help they need. Because again, I've been in this, I've done this work long enough to know when parents say something is off, <laughs> most likely something is off. So it is important that we know these things. So we've talked about five different signs. And you can see these are major issues. We don't want to play around. It could take 10 years for a child to be diagnosed with certain sleep disorders. And we do not want your child to go through that. So sleep patterns and duration, the daytime symptoms, the physical symptoms, the sleep-related problems, and also any parental concerns that you might have is enough to reach out for help to say, I need help with my child's sleep issues. Now, the next question might be, so where do I go? Listen, there are several board-certified sleep experts around the world. You could go to the American Academy of Sleep Medicine website, and right there, they do provide a directory that might help you. And also, I would recommend you check out my book. So I wrote a book. It's called Beyond Tired, A Sleep Physician's Guide to Solving Your Child's Sleep Problems for Good. So get this book, read it, go through it, figure out what could be going on. How do these symptoms match up? And from there, you can know how to advocate. I think this is just an important tool. This is a comprehensive guide that I wrote just for you. Again, because I see this again and again and again in my practice, and I want to help get the word out. So get the book. It's available on Amazon and share it, buy it and share it with someone in your community. You could be saving a life. You could be helping a child who might have been diagnosed 10 years later to be diagnosed now. So, so important. Get it on Amazon, Beyond Tired, and share it with those in your world. And also take this episode and move the mission forward. Help me make sleep a thing. So like this video, 
share it, and also subscribe to my channel. So as soon as new content comes up, you will be the first to know. And so until next time, I hope you rest well.